So, I didn't make any videos of the international up till now. Yeah, it just, it, it didn't feel right, and I was also incredibly tired. I was, I was actually going to start and make a video uh, on Sunday, but it was, Sunday was not a good day for me. I stayed up till 6.30 a.m. to watch the international, and then I woke up at like 4 p.m., and I was not very conscience, con conscious, even when, when I, I woke up, so... <laughs> I didn't make a video, but I am making a video now, and just to be very clear, we're going to talk about the, 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 the entire international super spoilers about everything, so if you don't want spoilers, and if you plan on watching it in the future, please don't watch this. Disclaimer, done. So, we're going to talk about the big things, and I'm not actually going to put up a... Um, I, I didn't open up the bracket so we could look at the bracket and, and talk about the entire progression. I'm just going to tell you what I think is the main points you could take out of this international, which is interesting, that are relevant for the rest of the scene and for moving forward. Other than other than talking about that, which we'll do in a second, uh, I didn't watch most of the group stages because I was still at MIT, still working on my game. It was actually the last week of me working on my game. In addition to that, there was SGDQ, so I was watching that. I did not watch a lot of the group stages. I did follow a little bit, but there's not much more I could say about that. In terms of uh, the actual playoffs, I watched as much as I could, but I was super tired because I just came back from a seven hour jet lag, everything, and it was crazy, and my hours are all over the place, and I'm still trying to adjust back, because again, I went to sleep at 6.30 a.m. on Sunday, which is not okay. Um, on, yeah, it was Sunday morning that I went to sleep at, so it was not okay. But I did watch the majority of it, and I don't want to go over all the upsets, like I said, of the bracket. I want to talk about the, the, the grand finals more than anything else. I want to talk about C Deck and I want to talk about evil geniuses. Now, first of all, C Deck should have won. And when I say should have won, I feel that they deserve to win just as much as EG. On the other hand, EG totally, totally deserve to win an international at this point. They are one of the best teams in the world. They've been very consistent and they're very good for a very long amount of time and they totally deserve it, which is why I feel totally fine with EG taking this over CDIC even though CDIC deserve it a little bit more. I do have a small issue with the finals. The fact that CDIC came out of the winner's bracket without any advantage whatsoever, I feel is very wrong for the simple fact that, first of all, um, coming from the winner's bracket, you kind of deserve something. And the fact that they actually beat EG 2-0 a day beforehand, and that, because EG came back to the finals, forget the fact that EG had to play LGD in order to, to get there, to get back there. But if you ignore that part and just mean that they got to the finals anyways and had to play again, EG had a distinct, clear advantage over them. Because they just played twice over and they know what doesn't work against c Dick, Which is much more valuable than knowing what does work for c Dick because EG can adapt and c Dick, well, we know this works and so we could just try this again, but they can change their strategy. We don't know what doesn't work against them. And that's exactly the problem. That's why EG had an advantage coming into the finals with that knowledge. In addition to that, there's a small part that they, they just came out of a 2-0 win. So they were, up, they were just feeling the game completely. And c Dick, that was their first game. And they lost that first game because it, it made sense for them to lose it. Um, but yeah, it, it was they, they should have had some kind of advantage, I feel. It, I, I, I feel that there should be some kind of winner bracket advantage. They deserved a winner bracket advantage. They didn't get it, and EG eventually took the plight. And that's, again, I'm okay with that. EG played wonderfully, and they're a wonderful team for a long time. Um, but other than that, I'm really just glad that CDIC did as well as they did, even if it's just second place. It's not that they completely came out of out of nowhere. For most people, yes. For the people who only follow Secret, and that's it. But they didn't actually come out of nowhere. They were actually LGD, uh, the youth edition. I don't know if it's the youth edition, but it was not the main LGD group, but the second LGD group. It was called LGD CDIC, and then they separated from LGD and became CDIC. And when I say not youth, that's actually a really relevant point. The youngest player there is 22, the oldest is 26, which is almost the 27 of Fear, the oldest player in a professional Dota, as far as I know, at least. That's actually a big thing, and that's, that's actually the biggest thing that I want to talk about. Um, one of the biggest things I want to talk about coming out of this international. The old players know how to play better. <laughs> and that's, it's funny said because EG obviously has Sumail, who's the youngest player, who's 16 years old. But it is still 
the, 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 most of them are actually much older. And the teams that are the most successful have a lot of older players that are like 24 and more than, or more than that. They have a lot of older players. And the reason that that's important is that they know how to work as a team. They're much more grown up than an 18, 19, 20, or even 21-year-old. And I really see that and I really feel that because CDEC, they're a very good team on, on every aspect, but the thing that shines to me at least the most is really their teamwork. They know how to work as a team in those engagements, in those incredibly aggressive things that they keep doing. They know how to work as a team. They trust each other. And that really shines, and that's why they, they kept beating pretty much everyone, including teams that have been playing together for such a long time. Specifically, CDEC have been playing together. Uh, the three players, there are three players that have been playing together for a long time, but two players came in on March. I believe it's Shiki, and I don't remember the other one. Um, but two players joined in March of this year, of 2015. They, they're still all much older, and they've been playing for a long amount of time. And that's really the strength here. I believe that if you take a group of above-average players that have been playing together for four years or so and are just really know how to play as a team, and you take the best players in the world that have never played together from the professional teams and you put them together, the team with, with the average players, the above-average players, have way more chances of winning because this game... At the core of it is about teamwork and that is really the most important thing you can have incredible individual skill but teamwork is really what what is the most important and specifically if we are to talk about secret and i'm not going to talk about secret much because there's not much more to say but they do have issues within that team that team specifically the one that stands right now have insanely high individual skill for each player but they're not that much of a cohesive team it never felt that way never and it doesn't feel that way now as well and that is why it makes perfect sense for me to them to reach where they reach, which is really good, don't get me wrong, but still it's not like top four. And it's not where everybody thought that they'd get to. And that's because teamwork is really that much stronger than individual skill. And usually what you see is individual skill. Usually you look at the carries, but it's not only about the carries. It's not only about the kills. It's about the entire team playing together cohesively. And that's why I'm so excited moving forward for, first of all, the fact that CD got up there and jumbled everyone means everyone have no idea what the hell's going on. This is going to be an insane shuffle, but there's a reshuffle or shuffle or whatever, but there's always an insane shuffle after the, the international, so that's not a surprise. The important thing is the fact that I really hope, I don't know exactly what's going to happen, nobody does, but exactly what the majors will do. The Dota majors will make them in some way, make teams, force teams into having a cohesive group of five and not changing that roster for a long amount of time. And even if you have problems, you work through them and you keep playing and you get better as a team, a five player team. And then I expect us a TI six to have much, much higher skill for specific, for those teams that could muster to do that. And I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see that progress. Not, not to say that it's not awesome right now, because right now, it really does feel like every team could take a game out of every team, and that's because there's so much insecurity and so much randomness everywhere. But the, the best teams actually shone through. The best teams made it through. The teams that have the most cohesion there and have been playing together for the longest amount of time and don't have immense egos or immense backgrounds around them. They're just these people that have been playing so much. Specifically, EG, they do. But still, they've been playing for a long amount of time together. And it's been, that organization has existed, the core of that team has existed for such a long time that it's enough. So um, that's really my, my notes from, from the International. It was a great event. The production value skyrocketed. It was really awesome. They had a couple of issues, like Deadmau. But yeah, other than that, a, a lot of really cool stuff. I'm really, really excited for Dota in general. I'm really, really excited for... 24 players custom games. This is this thing is going to blow up like crazy. I'm it's going to be freaking awesome once it comes out really and everything all the bugs are, are turned out. It's going to be amazing and I'm probably going to make some game at some point depending on what how I move on from here um with you know work and stuff like that. <sighs> it was a good week. Time to get back to real life, I guess. And I should probably play Dota because I haven't played Dota in a, two months. Sorry! <laughs> I really haven't played actual Dota in like two months. I've played custom games, but while I was at MIT, I couldn't play Dota. I don't know, I was just, it was uncomfortable for me to play Dota. And I, should, I should probably play Dota. Yeah. Okay. See you guys next time. Thanks a lot for watching.